That's a nice garfish. He's a bit of hell hooked to be honest, but uh, nice to see all the same. Let's get my wet cloth. There we are. That's the beauty of these single hooks. Come out nice and easy. Right, just pop the rod down. There he is. Let's pop him back in. What a beautiful sunset, beautiful. Well, first session of the week, I'm back on Bricks and Breakwater and I'm gonna fish the night tide. High water, it's in around three hours or thereabouts. Just started fishing now, but uh, at the moment I'm only fishing with one rod. Got a two hook flapper rig on that, size 1 0 hooks and uh, we'll just for now take it all in and be a little bit patient because in my experience when it comes to bottom fishing at this mark it doesn't tend to kick off until darkness approaches and when we do get a bit of darkness I'll set up the second rod and on there there's gonna be a 3-0 pattern off the panel for the bigger fish baits you know a nice fillet of mackerel or a whole squid we'll chop and change and uh, just play around Only one problem, we got quite a strong straight easterly wind and uh, as most of you will be aware, when it comes to fishing in this country, an easterly wind can often mean bad news. I think it's all to do with air pressure, it affects the fish's feeding patterns and um, you know it's never as productive as say on a southwesterly, but not much we can do about it, just gotta go for it, we'll persevere and hopefully we can get a couple of fish. Yeah, just waiting for the light to go down, so uh, I thought I'd have a bit of a spin. Second cast on the metal lure, but a cracking mackerel. There we are. Can't fault that at all. See if we can get another one. Because of this easterly wind, I think these mackerel are quite deep. Uh, that last one I just caught, 
I let the metal lure sink right to the bottom before I started retrieving and uh, boom, took it straight away. So I think they are quite a way down. As for the solo beach caster, no bites as of yet, but uh, I'm not surprised. Need some darkness. Tap on the right hand rod on the flapper rig. Left hand rod now in action. I've got a whole mackerel head on there, it's fairly close in, and uh, I've got the flapper rig at range. This uh, easterly wind now it's getting quite nasty. What a stunning morning. Couldn't wish for better. Hope you're all well. Hope everyone's keeping okay. Now, because the weather has been really bad this week, the water is still quite murky. It's a bit cloudy and uh, it's difficult to know where the fish are gonna be in terms of depth of water. So uh, I'm just gonna try everything. Throw the kitchen sink at it and hopefully catch a few.
yeah, it's been really quiet. Usually get something at this spot, but um, that's how it goes. I can only put it down to that coloured water from that storm we had a couple of days ago. But the fish at the moment, just not there. Another possible theory is that um, the tuna have scared them off. Speaking to some of the locals and uh, there's been quite a few sightings of tuna fairly close in, chasing the mackerel and the garfish. I did just have a bash with a float rod, 20 minutes on the float with bits of squid and mackerel, but again, nothing. I'll spend a bit longer at this spot and maybe I'll try somewhere else then. Beach casters now in action. On the right down rod, I've got a three hook flapper rig with size 1 0 hooks. On the left down rod, I've got a 4 0 Paganoster panel. At the moment, on there, a big chunk of mackerel. As for the three hook flapper rig, bottom hook is straight ragworm, middle hook is a chunk of mackerel, top hook is a chunk of squid. We're around two and a half hours off high water, so a uh, bit of time to play with. Yeah, I'm getting lots of little rattles from these uh, small pouting. Quite a few out there at the moment, but uh, hopefully they'll get a little bit bigger as the tide pushes up. This little uh, little chap took some ragworm. Yeah, I'm getting plagued by these small pouting at the minute. Every cast. I'm not going to keep any for bait simply because I've got loads of bait with me and I want to use it all up. So yeah. Oh, wind's dropping. Quite a stiff southwesterly earlier, but uh, yeah, thankfully not that strong now. But this week the plan was to do three videos. A RAS video, a mackerel video and a video up on Berry Head, but uh, <laughs> yeah, didn't happen. But I'll be back. Hopefully next time, better weather. I'm fishing my usual spot tonight, simply because I just want to try and get something on camera. Like I said earlier, uh, haven't got much footage at all this week, so I'm just doing what I can. But I can honestly say this has been the toughest fishing week of all time for me at Brixham. Okay, yeah, we've had the bad weather, but um, when I have managed to do a bit of fishing in between, it's been hard work. And usually it's pretty much guaranteed. I was speaking to Graham earlier on. Uh, he runs Brixham Bait and Tackle with his son, Matt. And he was saying about the colored water and how the mackerel just clear off until the water becomes clear again and that's probably not going to happen for another couple of days yet 
but hopefully I'll be back down later in the year and in my experience I always get the best of the mackerel fishing down here kind of November December time in terms of the better ones anyway but yeah I'll be back as soon as that bait hits the water they're onto it nothing as of yet on the left hand rod on the bigger bait so that one is fairly close in the bigger bait and uh, the three hook flapper giving that a bit more of a whack covering all bases long and short the good bull hess and conger that i've had off this mark have all been close in nothing far out and as i thought a bit early for the whiting yet i thought that uh, may be the case I reckon the bigger ones should be around in another few weeks. Wanted to come down here in November. That's my favourite time of the year for fishing at Brixham, but uh, couldn't get the time off work. An issue with taking leave. Bit of a nuisance, but there we are. Yeah, like November, it's that transitional period. You get the crossover of the summer and winter species. <laughs> Look at that right down rod. Tap, 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 tap. Just turn that light down. Little devils. Oh, it's better than blanking. Right, I'm gonna take off this rig and I've got another 3 -oh, uh, sorry, another three hook flapper rig in my rig wallet. But that one's got size 2 -oh hooks on it. And uh, that may prevent me hooking these pout in every cast. Ah, there are a few whiting out there. Half decent in fairness. Not a massive one, but uh, it'll do. This one took a squid and black legworm cocktail. Oops. It's quite lively. Oh, I'm pleased with that. And that's my first white in of this autumn. Yeah, nice to see that whiting. Of course, as the autumn progresses, and uh, as we hit winter, they will become a lot bigger. Love my whiting fishing. They always bring back some fantastic memories for me. As a kid, up on the mud of Newport, for example, the transporter bridge, I'd be up there with Dad from October until January, or late October. And uh, we used to get 20 a session, and they were monsters. The first video I made down here, uh, I caught some crackers in that one. They were the size of small codlin, actually. So yeah, if you want to see some nice ones, check out my first video. I was pulling in three at the time. Three hooks, three fish. And I think in that one as well, I caught quite a few mackerel and wrasse, etc. Throughout the course of the week. Yeah. The seals down there in the harbour, they're going nuts, having a whale of a time. Go 
got a knock there guys on the uh, left hand rod that's the first bite of the session on that one let's take a look <laughs> oh well, the pout in are getting a little bit bigger, just, but still nothing to write home about. But they're keeping me busy and they're keeping the old rod tips busy. We're around 30 minutes or so off high water now. Loads of those small pout in. No more white in, which has uh, shocked me to be honest, because they are shoalfish, and usually when you get one, you get a load, but that's how it goes. I did have quite a nice bite on the big bait rod, on a big chunk of mackerel, but it uh, didn't come to anything, so it could have been a small bullhus, a dogfish, small conger, who knows? I'll try and get something else on camera, a different species. That would be good. I'm gonna give it another hour or so. Need to be up early in the morning. Pack all of the stuff up. Back on the M4. Don't wanna go home. <laughs> Never a nice feeling, is it? Last day of your holiday. Back to the grind. Yeah, but see what else I can get. I'll be trying, put it that way. Ah, well, uh, I've got that other species. <laughs> the bottom fishing has gone a bit quiet, so got the old float rod back out. And uh, I put a size six hook on, small piece of ragworm, and we've got a small little pollock. Look at the size on that. Right, that is me done. Time to pack up. I tell you what, that southwesterly is getting proper nasty once again. It's funny really because uh, when I arrived first thing this evening, it was quite blowy, then it calmed right down, but yep, it's back. So, there we go. Thanks for uh, sticking with it. <laughs> I have no idea how I'm going to edit this video. It's going to be a challenge, but uh, yeah, sometimes good to have a challenge, isn't it? Guys, as always, thanks for watching. It's mega appreciated. Any questions or comments you have, put them below and I'll get back to you. Until the next one, look after yourselves. Take care. All the best.